So I'm starting now. Thing part three. So all I got left is like the back turn, like I said. The grabs, some Oki, you know, look at, look at some wall stuff. It's got a lot of good wall stuff, I guess. And I'm gonna look at, you know, some floor breaks. So to recap some of the shit that I remember, uh, one big thing is we got Tekken Bot working, right? Bam, bam, you can see it up top. This move, now that we got Tekken Bot working, we could look at when this move, this move, everybody already knows, one of those few moves in Tekken that has a shitload of active frames that you could get some cool uh, setups and shit off of. Obviously, like, you know, at worst, it's negative four, but with 10 active frames, you can make it plus five, I think. Um, and one of the common ways to set it up is when you end the juggle with forward three, four, and they wake up teching, right? So, forward three, four, bam, size to right, forward three, four, jab, forward three, four, dash, four, two, three. Plus four there, see? Now, if that were to hit him, that's good enough to make it plus 12 on hit. Because on hit, it's plus four. You can make this as good as plus 13 on hit, I believe. If you get uh, plus 13, this is hard to notice, though, the difference, because uh, you're going to risk the golden for You could link something, but 13 frames is a shoulder, so it's a big risk, because if you fuck it up and you're not quite right on your timing, like one frame off, they're going to block the shoulder, and if they're sharp, they're going to fucking kill you, which is why I recommend fish hooks. So once again, to show that off... Oh, he blocked it. Uh, crotch guard is on the second stand. We gotta put crotch guard on the second one. So to give you guys an example, but it might take me a couple of tries to get it, but it's safe. Ugh. It's safe because fish hook is safe. Back four. Fish hook. See, it links. 39 damage. That is guaranteed. If you get uh, at least active frame number 9 to connect, of course, active frame number 10 will still give it to you. So, any juggle that you can end with forward 3-4 will essentially give you that setup. Off of a tech, if they get hit, free fish hook. If they block, you're going to be plus 4 to plus 5 off of a tech. If they hold back, it's not going to be as good, but it's still good. If they hold back to get up, um, let's make a guard off. And then... Back quick row. Uh, oh, I hit him. Why'd I hit him? Oh, it's one of those where you got to stand block. How do I make him stand block? I mean, I got to record it on myself. How did I make him stand block again? I forgot, guys. Quick recovery. That's the kick up. <sighs> stand block, they can only avoid it by tech rolling. Really? I got him to block it before. Was I just so, so slow? Remember last time? You were here last time. I got him to block it, didn't I? Maybe I was so slow. Alright, well, I just learned something. I could have sworn last time I got him to hold back and block it, and I was getting like negative one. It's still negative four. Hmm. Yeah, I probably did it too slow. All right, all right. Good shit, good shit. Thank you for correcting me. All right, so yeah, uh, they have to tech to block it. Oh, well, that's an even better setup than I thought, because I thought that if they held back, I was seeing negative one, which would be like active frame number three or four. And I thought that would just be, you know, the trade-off, right? It's still negative one is not a bad situation to be in. But in actuality, they have to tech to avoid getting hit. So then I'm hitting a back turn. I'm noticing. Is that always gonna happen? Let me record it on myself. That's the best way to test these things. Cause then you only need to record it once. Right? I should record him doing something more, but whatever. Let's see, let's, if, if I always get hit back, sir, that'll tell me what I need to know. Okay, it's not always back, sir. Not always back, sir. Got it. But if I hold back, how plus is he? Let's see. I'm just gonna hold back. He's plus. Only plus seven. So he doesn't get the free fish hook unless they tech. Because the thing about teching is, mechanically speaking, teching, right? Which is these quick side rolls, right? When you don't get spiked. Um, 
See that this that, that's a hard essentially Tekken's version of a hard knockdown. Any uh, any soft knockdowns, you could tech, you could hold back to get up quickly, and you could uh, do quick recovery, which is I forget what it is. Uh, but anyway, see that's a tech. You go you could go either left or right by uh, toward the screen by mashing kicks, toward the background by mashing punches. The thing about teching is they're invincible for the whole duration, right? So this is kind of how you set up meaties, if you will. Like, you could set up meaties without it too, but this is one of the most effective ways because then you could get by several of the early active frames of your move during that process of them getting up and make them block the end, which is probably why, like, that works so well. So that allows you to... It, it gets up slower, but it gets up invincible. It's just you, you could force them to eat them 50-50, essentially, if you uh, space yourself right. You get in their face, you recover properly. If you, if you knock that recover fast enough, you get in your face. And because they essentially they can't armor, they can't uh, sidestep, they can't low parry, they can't do shit, right? Unless they are uh, Akuma, Eliza, they could DP, and Geese could Raising Storm. So, universally, it doesn't matter which character you are. If you're ready for these tech situations, you could force a 50 50, should you choose. Should you do that every time? No, you shouldn't. Sometimes you should just go for other stuff. You gotta add layers to your offense and tech. But uh, more often than not, you shouldn't. Right? So that's what's going on with this shit. Getting more frames off of attack than it would um, off of them holding back on hit. Because they can still tech into a duck, right? And then you would hit them with this. And that's when you would get a free fish. Hook. That's what's going on mechanically speaking. Huh. <clears throat> What's up forward three on block? Um, negative two. By the way, up forward three is one of those moves. Look at the knockdown. When you see that sort of knockdown, always test your shit at the wall. If I recall right, up forward three was one of those moves that he gets a pick up with one plus four. You do this, and then if, you're, if the wall is to your right side, you could uh, one plus four pick up into a down back one four. And negative two is great. Yeah, negative two is even better than negative three, but negative two and negative three are in the same situation where you can move. And you can sidestep for the most part. Uh, another another cool move was this one. Up forward one, 18 frames. If you hit him crouching, he gets a free two four or a free fish hook. Crouch guard, right? Normal hit. Plus 12, you see? Plus 12. So that's a free fish hook, which is 12 frames. Right, but if you don't mind negative frames and uh, and some weird mix-ups, you can do two four. Even though two four is a high, it does two more damage the, and it's negative one. The thing about it's weird because it's like a high with a really good hitbox, even though he's crouching. It's weird. Uh, there's a couple of moves that do is that give you guaranteed stuff stuff when you hit uh, an opponent in a crouching state. One of the more infamous ones would be like Kazuya and Heihachi's forward four kick. Uh, which knocks down a counter here, but if you hit crouching opponents, they've always, they always got free shit after it for a lot of damage, especially in the older games. But here, the cool thing about Feng's 2-4 is, even though it's negative 1, it pushes out. I talked about this earlier. Moves that push out, it kind of doesn't matter if they're negative 1, 2, or 3. Maybe negative 9 will matter from this range, but some negative 9 moves would be like back here. And then, then it doesn't matter because you can just back that away from everything. So negative 1 is more, it's more to set up whiffs, but not only that... You could go into a, a mix-up, a built-in mix-up into this thing, which is 2-1, uh, sorry, 2-4-1. Alright? And that last hit never combos, but it, you could delay it. See? You could delay it quite a bit. This is just a reminder. And if you input 2-4-1 and hold back, you go into back turn. Right? Now, the thing about back turn is anytime you try to force a back turn mix-up with Feng, He's one of those that needs a clean hit to get his most dangerous low to connect. You see how it under uh, his blue text on the left under the damage it says clean hit, right? Uh, sorry. You see how it says clean hit? If it's not a clean hit, it won't trip, which is going to be weird to do on a uh, opponent that's not mobile. How about I just have him back that just to show you guys? I'll hit him too. Let's have him back that after he gets hit. Ah, he just did one little back dash. You can probably do two. I recorded it on myself. Let's see if you can get away from it. Okay. 
Okay, that's one of those situations where you could actually do it. It's not a frame trap. Because you're negative one, and that is a slow, uh, even though he hits me. See? Even that forward three exchange. The forward three is 21 frames. Right? So he can do whatever the fuck he wants. As long as it's not a high. But that's actually one situation where you could actually get away from it. Definitely not on block, though. Right? I did this earlier. Last time. See? You just gotta back dash cancel. And, and as long as you're not slow like I am, it won't trip you. So you don't have to respect the mix-up out of this, typically. Whew, that's a tight window. Uh, but on a hit, you kind of do. Go figure. I didn't know about that. Uh, let's see. There's a way you could step to make this fuck up too, right? Maybe not. Of course you could probably step guard him, right? Well, we're about to go through his back turn stuff now, so let me not get too crazy ahead of myself right here. Because that's what I'm going to test with his back turn stuff. How do you beat them all, you know, if there is a way to beat them all? If not, how do you, like, minimize his rewards with your guessing game? Or how do you put the guessing game a little bit more in your favor and force him to change it up? Um, things like uh, transitions are, overall, they're not about frame data. They are about stopping the opponent from swinging using other things like movement or built-in parries like that that fucking flailing arm shit parries automatically that's shifting clouds which has moves and you can go into tempo out of it if you hold back and the back tempo stuff of course the classic auto back dash for you uh, another thing thanks core circle forward there's a lot of shit you could do out of it and the one big low is called Super Forward 1, which on counter hit gives him a free juggle, right? I think that's what you could do. It was really difficult, though. But the easy pickup would be dash 1 plus 4, right? Well, easier. So, it's a whatever the fuck the follow ups would be, right? But you could pick up off of that on counter hit. Very dangerous low. You cannot low parry it because it's a shoulder. And it's only negative 14 on block, so most people cannot launch it on block, right? And the other long range danger slows down back three. But the really key one is core circle forward one in my opinion. Not not that it should be your go-to low, but it forces every time they see this crouch dash in their face, they have to think about that low, which opens up him doing fucking so many things. This headbutt that's plus on block, for example, plus five on block, plus nine on hit. He could do his uh this homing kick, down forward three plus four. Which gives him a free uh, four till the three. He could do that at a core circle forward if you hold the four down, and you do core circle forward down forward three while holding four the whole time. You could do that. Otherwise, you're gonna get this low, the generic low. If you do any, if you try it any any other way, you're gonna get that. See, same thing. You try to press it raw, you're not gonna get it. Hold four and press three while holding down forward three while holding four. Same thing with while standing four. You can just do core circle forward four. You'll get his while standing four, which is a nice. It does more damage than most while standing fours. And on counter hit, it knocks down. Uh, I don't know. If, I don't think that's free. That down four. It combos, but I don't think that's free. Uh, it's a guardable. It gives you mix up basically. So you can do core circle forward mix ups. A lot of that. Any of those weird knockdowns that where they fall on their ass like that, you don't get anything guaranteed, but you get a lot of plus frames. So you could do like, you know, core circle forward mix-ups and shit like that. Um, you could do core circle forward up forward, core circle forward hop kick, core circle forward down forward three, which is a big one, safe on block mid launcher, right? A lot of shit, a lot of shit out of that. Feng has a lot of trickery and you really have to like utilize a lot of his moves to make Feng good. He could do the basic poking game like most cat, like every character essentially can for the most part. Uh, but uh, it's just not a, if you just keep it super basic with like down forward ones and shit, you could win like this if you're good at teching and good at movement and have knowledge of how to punish people. But it's just not enough. You need you really need to get into things moveless to really start to fuck with people. He's one of those. He's one of those that like I wouldn't recommend for a new player, especially because of his defensive crutch. If people are looking for those people like to ask the question, hey, who should I pick if I'm new at the game? The first answer is pick who you think is cool. The second answer is if you really care about, like, mechanically speaking, like, learning the mechanics, 
and like you don't want like you don't want it to be overwhelming if you really care about that more than anything else you don't give a fuck about cool characters then i would recommend staying away from thing honestly if you're one of those people because there are people like that and i think that's an understandable way to be you don't have to be you know uh feng is one of those that he'll he has a lot going on and a lot of uh, crutches defensive built-in defensive crutches you know and that's the only thing like you have to like if you're gonna play feng and you're new to tech and you have to be aware of these things where how much am i you know you, you should use them but how much are you overly like relying on them to like win you know if you are, try to focus a little more on using, learning how to use other tools. He has a lot of really good tools. You should learn how to use, not all of his moves, but like a lot, you know, all of his best tools, right? You follow? I saw a little high abusing that shit earlier. What, up 3 Yeah, up 3 is really good. That's fine. It's really good. It also gives him a free, uh, four tilde three, right? Uh, if you can input four tilde three. Piano, piano. He recovers where you're so. Yeah, see, that's guaranteed. <clears throat> so now that we got all that out of the way. Yeah, Feng was my first character, but I only got most of my fundamentals when I started playing Mega. Yeah, and you know, and that, let me be clear. You can still learn fundamentals when playing Feng. The thing is, most people don't have, like, a training partner that will, like, no, you know, call them out on that shit. And also, it's hard to call people out on that shit. Like, especially if someone like me, for example, you see me play online, a lot of that, that shit beats me. I have trouble dealing with that shit because I just haven't put in the work to, like, really get good at this matchup and haven't fought the good players consistently enough, right? All that. But at the end of the day, I still know it when I see it, right? I've been around long enough to know when I see it. So, it's like, if you're getting that from someone like me and you're playing me and, like, the wins that you are getting are because of those things, it, 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 it makes me sound like a bitch, <laughs> right? <laughs> and it's true. I do sound like a bitch when I say that, but I also feel like I know what I'm saying. Like, you know, and there's some people who just be like, just do what you gotta do to win, which is fine. But if you're playing to learn and trying to improve, uh, one of the things that goes underappreciated is focusing on your weak stuff, even if you risk losing. Focus on, like, you know, learning some shit, like, uh, learning how to uh, be like, all right, I'm gonna learn how to use some of these other tools that Feng has. I can't think of any right now, but whatever. I'm gonna learn this course to go forward mix up, right? That doesn't mean that should be the only thing you go for, but that does mean that you should think about setting it up more often than you normally would, right? If you wanna learn how to like execute this on the, in the clutch, execute these mix ups and, and convert off of them in the clutch, shit like that, you know? Then it's like, all right, I don't know this matchup. You know what? I'm gonna kind of play defensive and kind of try to keep my space. Let them hit me with lows and just kind of see what they do and try to get a feel for the moves they're doing instead of just overwhelming them with my own offense and always pressing buttons. Always pressing buttons, right? Because I'm thing, right? You know? Oh, always doing shit like this, you know? Always. Every fucking match, no matter who I'm fighting, I'm always going to be doing shit like this, right? You know? I, 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 if your goal is to play a match, like, to get better, I feel like, yeah, those are good things to do. All the best things do it too, right? But... You're not, like, growing. You're not learning the other stuff that's going to make you a complete player. Regardless of which character you're using, right? Oh, here's another one. Um, what is it? While standing one out of... Yeah, that. That's a big one. You have to kind of input this, like, Dragonov's while standing four after his uh, while running two counter hit. Which is to say, down... You don't need it, but... Generally, a clean down and down forward without a core circle forward will get you while standing one. Otherwise, you're going to get core circle forward one. But there's a way to do a core circle forward and still get it. Same with Dragonov. Do core circle forward and just make sure forcefully, manually move the stick to down forward and then let go and press one. That's how I, you know, that's how I do. You see how I'm getting like a half circle forward? I'm still showing core circle forward and I'm getting it. You know what I'm saying? Just hold down or down forward and then let go and press one. And uh, basically, that while standing one is really good because it's 14 frame mid, very fast, and only negative one. And it has counter hit properties. That second one gives you the third one free. You know? Uh, even a 1 2 is only negative 10, if I'm not mistaken, if they block it. Yeah, see, it's only negative 10, and then the, the, the third hit is still a like deterrent. The 1 2 1. The third hit is still deterrent, and only a negative 12 deterrent, and delayable. So there's a lot going on, really. A lot of things uses use this quarter circle forward. It's a wall standing one. You'll see it very often if you, you know. It's just one of those ways he gets in because negative one is totally fine for Feng. Back one is still a threat. Back one is ten frames. 
Anything slower than a jab, he's gonna exchange, and unless it's like a magic four or something, he's gonna knock you down and get a free shoulder for 44 damage. So, negative one is in your face is totally fine with Feng. Alright, so now we got that out of the way. Um, I still have to upload the original, original, I got it in three parts right now. Uh, stuff to my YouTube, just go down and see my YouTube link, I always upload these run throughs. Uh, I'm figuring I'm just gonna hold on to the Feng stuff until I upload it all in one shot and get all of Feng up in one shot instead of doing like as I stream them and upload them right away. So I talked about I ended it on the course before last time. Now we're gonna talk about back turn, right? And it seems like the only way to go back turn in a neutral situation with Feng without swinging buttons is to cancel out of his back three by inputting back three tilde four piano sound, right? Now that's back three. And you press four right after you do it, you go back turn, which kind of moves you a little bit to the left. Just a little teeny weeny bit. Not enough to really sidestep, but it does move you a little bit off axis. Um, so first move on the list here is back turn one. Wow, this is a doozy. I think they gave him this in this game. I don't know if he had this in tag two. But back turn one is a 12 frame high, negative one on block, plus 14 on hit and counter hit. Regular hit and counter, which means he could, and this is one of those rare instances where there's an actual link. He could link a shoulder. Um, I don't know if that's a, you could raw, I don't know if you could raw hit confirm that. I do not know. Um, I never asked. I think you can. I think you can. Random guard, right? Right. Right. So, um, I'm bad at hit confirming in case you couldn't tell. You can't. You gotta practice it. And if you're gonna be a Feng player, that's a big one. You're gonna wanna be able to do this. Check this out. All I'm doing here is. Uh, CPU opponent action number one random guard number two guard all that's all you have to do and then wait for it to see the hit animation the cool thing about uh, this is when it hits it pushes them back so you essentially to confirm it you could just look for that pushback and then do it uh, another thing it's it's just one so if you input one hold the one down and then all you gotta do is press back plus two while holding the one down to get the shoulder so always hold the one down if you do that move uh, the cool thing is it's on block until we negative one. So just like I said before with the uh, While standing one, that's totally fine Negative one interface. That's fucking fine. That's still a setup for back one if they mash anything that's slower than a jab Oh wait plus one Negative one not plus one Yeah, yeah I already talked about it confirming I already showed it I'm bad at it it's showing Tekken Bot is showing it as negative one, and so is RB Norway. You sure it's plus one? Oh, you talking about side step two? I'm sorry. Okay, got it. Yeah, yeah, got it, got it. Side step two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw that earlier. Uh, I ain't talking about side step moves. Oh, they're not showing here. Wait, I did talk about side step moves. Uh, yeah, this is a homing move. Yeah, this is good. Yeah, side step two is plus one about, but it pushes back. So one back dash and you know you don't get the low. So it's not that dangerous. It's not like unless you're at the wall, it's not really gonna force a dangerous mix up. So um, oddly enough, the move that puts him at negative, this is the move that's like makes down three inescapable in the transition. But you're completely going by making them afraid of that. Also that, like the fast low. That's to stop him from pressing buttons other than hot kick, maybe. My music ended. I'm going to go with the classic JRPG uh, playlist here. Hold on a second. Number one. This Gaia. Was it somebody just speedrunning this game? <clears throat> Lower it a bit. All right, so. Back turn one. Very good move. It is a high. You can duck it. Um, and uh, like I said, Feng's uh, transitions don't appear to be about frame data. So I don't know if there's a way he could force this as a frame trap, per se. Sidestep 2 hitting him is the, is the obvious frame trap. 
But like I said, it pushes out, so. So, if I just send him the back dash after getting hit. Right? That's a free back dash. Now, look at that. In some instances, it's going to whiff. Because sidestep the alignment is going to be weird. So, the way the hitbox and hurtboxes interact is going to be weird. Generally, against Feng here, at least, if I go left, he has to block it. If I go right, it's going to whiff. See? That's just how, that's how it works. This is a matchup specific thing. Um... These are the little nuances you have to look into when you really get down to the nitty gritty of tech and, and you're looking for these little ways to min max your, your matchups. Like if you're a tournament player, those are the kind of things you gotta look for. Because if he can't back that shit, I'll tell you for sure, he ain't, he ain't gonna sidestep it either. It's gonna hit him, see? He tries to sidestep, start to sidestep, but it's gonna hit him. Too many plus frames. So versus Fang, now you know you could do sidestep left into back turn one, and the only thing they could do is duck or parry or whatever. That's the only thing they could do. At least in an up close situation, if you end up hit the tip, it might be a different story. See, but if you're up close and they don't back dash, you can try that. So anyway. Yeah, back turn one, very good move. Uh, back turn two is next. Uh, this is... Ah, this is that shit. 16 frame startup, and then there's a follow-up, right? Back turn two, two. Right? And that knocks down... Uh, does it give anything for free? Down four... Alright, not a stomp, but it seems like a down four three. Yeah, down four at least is free. For five damage, not bad. <sighs> down three for a little more damage. Might be free, might not. Oh, if they don't stand still. That's interesting. Let's test down three. That might be the most damage free follow-up. Oh, that's free. So he gets nine damage if they try to get up, because it's weird like that, right? It messes with the scaling. See? But if I stay down, I eat the... No, I still eat nine damage. Why was I getting 12? Whatever. Uh... And he's just telling me in the chat they, they get a free shoulder? Not a free, but... If I stay down... Oh, okay. But if I try to get up the shoulder... Okay, so you can sacrifice... Um, your free follow-up and you can go for some nice Oki here, I'm assuming. This looks like one of those that might give you something really nasty. Let's see what kind of shit he could hit you with. input all right wishful thinking right okay it doesn't launch so I don't like it uh, shit what else is this normal hit launching from standing down forward three I want something that will launch him for getting up wrong. It doesn't seem like that's the kind of thing. It's like the Oki hit that knocks him away. You don't get anything that could really launch him in that during that get up animation. Down four three looks guaranteed though. Am I crazy? Okay, no. This is like shoulder. shoulder as a mid option as a strong mid option and the, oh, the worst thing that could happen is a whiff let's see how I can punish that 
This might be something that you see from other friends. Yep, you can definitely launch that. You got to time it though. Also, you have to do a while standing kick. So I don't know how many people know about this. I think this is only when you're face down, head towards. I'm not sure. I actually just learned this in this game. This might have been around forever now. Uh, but I just learned about this in this game. So if you get up, you could uh, but get up by tapping up in this situation and you press either of the kicks, you will get a while standing kick. But that doesn't seem to be the case for a punch. I don't know why. It's just a thing. Everybody could do this. Everybody. And this is big for Feng especially because his while standing three is really fucking cheap. It has a lot of range. It's kind of difficult to punish sometimes. Even though it's negative 12. So, you gotta, and his while standing four is a pretty good one, as you can see. So keep that in mind. Tap up, and uh, with the right timing, you have to delay it a bit. Tap up, neutral, and then press, press one of the kicks, and you'll get it. And that's how I was punishing that whip shoulder. What I was trying to do after that was try to get up and then hop kick him. It seems like the only way you could punish that whip is by getting up and mashing a kick that way, a while standing kick. And if you, that doesn't have to be a launcher for, uh, for you, it, you probably won't get a launch. He recovers uh, fast enough. Right. You have to stay down and let it whip. I'm trying to hawk it, he ain't doing it. It's weird. Yeah, see? It's not punishing. It's hitting because I'm not blocking after the shoulder, but it's not punishing. That shoulder, wake up shoulder didn't even work. That's 13 frames. Jab works. Okay, I got the shoulder in time. Trying to get a hop kick. There it is. Oh man, that is very difficult to do. I'm not gonna lie, but you can get a hop kick there. Which means you can get a 15 frame launcher on them. So you might see this if they get greedy. If you stay down, my recommendation would be if you get hit by that back turn 2-2 two -two and you're going against Feng, just stay down. There's no like super crazy shit that he's gonna hit you with, I think. If you just stay down, even if you eat more damage for staying down, You get a lot of reward if he gets greedy with that shoulder. Um, and I'm talking about in a situation where you're going in and you don't know each other. You know, just assume otherwise. Assume that like he's gonna go, he, he's gonna go for the shoulder or guarantee low. He recovers so slow, it's awkward. Yeah. Right. I don't know if I get any faster. That's the first frame, though. Well, Alright, back turn 2-2. Two, two. Comes out 16 frames. It is negative 13 on block, the second hit. Forces crouch. So some characters can launch him for that. <clears throat> the first hit is negative 6 plus 5. Keeps him back turn. So this is a low-level feng you're going to see a lot of. They're gonna try to get you to duck because the second hit is very delayable. And it will still knock you down. I don't know if he gets any counter hit properties on the second hit. Oh, and it's a launcher. Oh boy, that's where it gets scary right there. And he gets the classic. 
plus four. Um, so it's a launcher. Only negative 13. A lot of characters can't really do much with their negative 13. They'll get their in between, you know, uh, while standing Punisher. But not everybody has it in between between a while standing four and a launcher. For example, um, Bob. He's got while standing four, and then he has a 14 frame launcher. Uh, what's another example? I think Brian's another example, right? While standing three until he gets the launcher, I think. Uh, while standing three or while standing four, they're both 11, I think. Uh, and maybe some other characters that I just can't remember right now. Gigas. He launches at negative 15. Until then. Sorry. He doesn't launch until like negative 17. Negative 15 he has an in-between. He does. But it's, it's 15 frames. So other than that he gets while standing 1. For 11 frames. Right? So. Getting that blocked against those characters. Not a big deal. <clears throat> if you know your matchups. That's a risk worth going for. You know? And then that even though you're at negative 6. You could uh. You know. Fuck with them. You get them to hesitate. Now, as far as how to deal with this defensively, oh, it tracks to your right side. I'm, I'm saying yours is not his because he's back to it, so it would be his right side, but really it's his left side, theoretically. So basically, just considers that you cannot sidestep right. You can, but you got a step guard. So go left. Plus one. Right, even at plus one. So step away from the move. All right. So that's one. Once again, left. Both ways, but left is what's important because it beats out both options now. So, so far we're good with left, so far. <clears throat> All right, so that's the two suit. Um, let's see. Back turn three. Ah, that's the shit. It's basically the same as forward forward three. The same thing. And it serves the same purpose. It's best as an Oki tool. But, uh, it is plus on block. If you really get them scared. But it's 32 frame startup. So it's slow. Uh, plus four force crouch on block. Plus eight force crouch on hit. On counter hit, same knockdown. Boom, right? And I don't think he gets a pickup or anything, but you get a free stomp. Right. Yeah, no pickup, just a free stomp. Down 3 plus 4 for 19 damage, which is great damage. Uh, same thing going on with back turn. See? Same shit. 36 plus 19. 30, same damage, too. Exactly the same damage. Everything's the same. Uh, so, it's a slow move, so it's going to be weird. Like, I don't think it's like a tracker. Right? It's obviously not gonna track. It doesn't track in a regular situation really, so it's not gonna track there either. So so far we're still good with side step left. The low is gonna be the big one. Which I already know how to deal with. Um Back turn four is next. So any situations where you have Oki, for example, uh, a good example. At the wall, sometimes you might want to end with the a wall combo with three, three, four, the laid four for the low wall hit. You they wake up, your back turn. If you notice they stay down. Just throw that shit out. And if they tech and they're forced to block, you're plus four. You force them to crouch, you're plus four, and their back is to the wall. You follow? That's one way to use that move. Anytime you're trying to do like a back turn Oki situation, that move is there to keep you covered if they stay down or tech like weird, at a, get up at a weird time. That's, in my opinion, a way to use that move. Not so much in a neutral situation, you know? Unless you get your opponent so fucking scared they don't know what the fuck is going on. And by all means, Next is back turn four, which is just a knockdown high. It is 10 frames, negative eight on block. A lot of damage, 25 to 30 damage. So that's just a fast option. Let's see if this fucks things up. It might not actually. Wow, the spacing. 
Ah. So it might be because of the spacing, but it's losing out to both sides. Hold back. Yeah, it's plus uh, it's ten frames, so it's not gonna work. At negative, it's good. So they try to get cute. Okay, that's what's important. That's the one I would worry about the most. Alright, so still, it's a good move. And at the wall, if they fuck up the time, because it's 10 frames, if you happen to hit them with the back turn 2 by itself, yeah. that's gonna stick them because they cannot step that. Just like jabs, when you're at negative 5, you can't step uh, you can't step 10 frame jabs. That's a 10 frame kick. And the back turn 2 puts him at plus 5. Puts you at negative 5 if he hits you. So you can't step that kick. And it's safe on block. So good option. Really good option. Alright, next we have... Uh, and it wall spots. Next we have back turn 1 plus 2, which is the double level. Uh, this might give him free stuff at the wall. My guess is if they're at the wall, it will not wall splat. It'll still do that, but they'll be close enough to get hit by this. I'll test that later. Uh, but it is only negative 5. Uh, no real unique counter properties, so it's safe. Just like the back turn two. That's the back turn two is negative six, not negative five. Sorry. Um, yeah, it doesn't look like it should track at all, really. It's not real crushing. Oh shit, weird. He does move for Oh, see, in this situation, you once again you don't want to go to your right. Alright, um lastly. Well not last. Uh So this is going to be the one right here. This is the actual low that's going to catch you. And that's why it's used by good fan players. It's more damage than a standard generic low. Um, this is his down four from back turn. This is 10 frames. So you're not stepping this shit. Even if I block, this, probably not stepping it. Yeah, see? It came out with his left leg there for some reason. It's just one of those weird lows. Um, but 12 damage. And plus three. Really good. Not pushes out at plus three though, but it is plus three, so it's a pretty good setup for fish hook, I think. Right? Like if you do, let's do the sequence right now. Oh, he's he was crouching. I'm an idiot. Sorry. Still, let's see if I could uh step. Okay, I can. Uh, he can't fish hook after that because he is recovering crouching. How about if he does? So it covers his left side. Interesting. So that's not really a frame trap. Oh, it doesn't cover his other side. All right, but he does have an option to cover one side at least. Um, plus three is nice. You do recover crouching. No, keep that in mind. So you can't really frame trap much with it. Um, this is just something you got a low pair if you want to deal with it. But honestly, I'd rather eat it because the really dangerous one is the fucking down three. So now that we know that every other non-low loses to Feng, uh, to me, whether it's Feng or most characters of that, that are not named Gigas, sidestepping left, 
We can OS. We can OS. Start with the low. That is the one that might fuck it up. The second hit of back turn 2-2. Two, two. That's back turn down 3, by the way. Juggle starting low. See, the, the fast low is going to fuck it up, but... He's a little weird, but I feel like you could do it. Hmm. Okay, so what's messing this up right now is the down four. That's gonna fuck this up no matter what. But if it's between the dangerous, the more dangerous options, you could do a deep side step left and just eat the down four. I mean, you, you can already see it. Like, he doesn't even need to do the low at this point, but you get the idea. But the 10 frame down 4 is going to fuck up, like, OSing around everything. So that really ties this together for Feck. If he didn't have that, then he'd be fucked that back turn against any sharp opponent. You could turn this into a gimmick. Kind of like Kazumi's forward 3 on block into the fly. Essentially, you could do this against Kazumi, but you have to go to your right instead of uh, instead of your uh, left. No, I didn't forget back turn one plus two. I went over that. See. So, you have to step kind of deep for the back to one pursuit, though. See? Also, you got to be ready for that. The camera switching, <laughs> switching sides. You got to be ready for that if you want to punish it. But, whatever. Name of the game. That's Tekken for you. So, keep this kind of shit in mind. Because this isn't exclusive to dealing with Feng's thing. This deals with a lot of strings, a lot of mix-ups. Back turn three. But back turn three doesn't turn you around. Oh, oh, you mean Oki. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I was talking about back turn one pursuit already. I'm gonna look at look at it when I'm near the wall, because you could probably get a uh, back turn three guaranteed if I already guess. But this whiffs. Back turn three mid stage whiffs. They tech. My guess is at the wall. It's guaranteed. Just, to, just a hunch. I'm just showing how to blow all this up. Uh, essentially, you force Feng to only rely on um, the back turn down four if he wants to be aggressive, which is fine. But then at the end of the day. That will have to keep you still. You, you, at some point, you will have to make me deal with that. That's just like the lasagna layers, right? That's them testing you. Like, eventually, this motherfucker is gonna duck or hop kick. Eventually, he's got to do something about this low, right? Eventually, a low parry or something. And the moment he does the low parry, that's when he start to do shit like they stop and wait. And that's really what's gonna fuck with your head. So, you know, there's never an answer to just completely eliminate something like this. The only thing you could do is fuck up like their timing if they try to force a mix-up instantly without delaying. But if they delay their timing, everything changes, right? So it's not that it's useless.
<sighs> or rather, wait. If they take that, you are plus four. He's, he, it was whiffing. I know that. He, it was, I talked about back turn three. It's the same as four, four, three. I already talked about that. Um, it's whiffing, see? If they tech, it whiffs. I'll put the other way. They have to basically stand straight up, I guess, or, or some shit. If you delay it. Ah, even if I delay it, it whiffs. He's just out of range. Maybe in older games it was like that. But not now. So anyway, so yeah, uh, the back turned down for really ties all together. So uh, down three, uh, you pretty much can't step it though. In some instances, if you step it, I'm noticing he doesn't get the clean hit, but that seems inconsistent to me. Uh, if you can make, if you, if you can find ways to consistently get around this to the point where it's not going to trip you, then by all means, go for it. Uh, but in general, that's pot that's his most threatening low, and that's how he mixes his shit up. He's lost. Yes, he, he he's uh, crouching, right? So you could. Uh, did somebody say you could do an instant crouch cancel out of this and get the pickup? Yeah, that's not easy to do. Um, the easy pickup is while standing one, I guess. Damn. Finicky ender, huh? Well, whatever. You find whatever the best job is. Yeah. Oh, you sh really? Is that so? I think I've been hit by this before, not knowing this. All right, see, now you're making sense. Thank you. All right, so in, this, in mid stage, if you, don't, if you don't know what's going on, when he hits you with back turn one plus two, you could go for the three, right? And it'll hit him if they stay grounded, which is cool. And then what ends up happening is if I tech, Feng is still plus four. So I have to tech and not swing. Of course, there's a risk from you swinging there, right? Oh, wow, maybe not. You're right in his face. Wow. You have to respect that down 4-1? You can't step it. That's cheap. I think I've been hit by this several times not knowing this. Now, that's good shit. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that's a mindfuck. That is definitely a mindfuck because I know for a fact that this exact setup, it's a down forward one, has hit me before. Right? It wasn't, it wasn't ringing a bell until it all came together that you explained it there. Uh, so he's at plus four. That's fucking cheap. That's good shit. And I'm sure the, the back turn three is guaranteed at the wall, like I was saying before. All right. So then he has the back turn command grab. I talked about this last time. You can input it as either one plus four or two plus three. Now, I'll look at the Oki in a second, but the cool thing about this is essentially when Feng is back turned, that makes his throws a 50-50 guessing game, breaking his throws. 
He can either do the generic throws, which look like one plus two break from back turn. That's a universal uh, mechanic. But Fen gets to mix it up because he add, he has a one plus two break command grab out of it. Any character that, that could go back turn used to be able to mix it up with their regular throws, but they made regular throws generic breaks either punches. So essentially you can mix up one plus three or two plus four throws with um, his command grab for back turn. So keep that in mind. So that's another layer to your like mind fuckery when you go back turn with Feng. Damn, that seems to be the best way to go to back turn to force mix ups off of 2 4. That really does seem to be the best way. Because he's like right in your face in great positioning uh, to set up his other shit. I mean, you, you know, you can still step it all, but whatever. And the plus frames aren't really there for you, right? Was it 2 4? Uh, 2 4 was uh, on hit. It's a back turn. Is that plus? I forget. 2 4 back turn. No, it's negative 2. 2 4 without back turn is negative 1. 2 4 with back turn is negative 2. So it's not like a frame advantage thing. It's a uh, mix up thing. And you can just hold forward to block. It's the best way to turn and block. Fastest way. Remember, when you back turn, hold forward. You're going to block. Unless you hold forward for really long and they don't swing, then you're going to walk into something. Hold forward until you fully turn around. <laughs> and you will block whatever they do. That's how you get away from Ling Zayu's counter hit forward forward three four, right? Forward forward three mistrust. Because it turns you around. And if you don't hold forward a block, mistrust hits you. Trying to turn around. Alright. So we got the back turn stuff out of the way. Let's look at the Oki starting with the back turn command grab. And I always like to start with wake up kicks, unless you think there's out there right now. What's up, Kale? Uh what do I got? I got throws. I got throws. What's up, video games? I think Feng is cool. Yeah, uh, I think Feng is cool. You just gotta really use a lot of his tools. Like you could play it relatively simple with Feng, but it's weak when you do. Weaker than a lot of other characters. You know, you sure you can do a lot of down four, down four and one. You can do some down threes, down back threes, and you can keep it like poking simple. But if you just kind of stick with that and then go with occasional launchers, you kind of, it's, he's kind of lacking. Especially since his hop kick range is so shitty. And then, you, you know, you gotta resort to shouldering a lot more than, than launching. But when you start to really get into the nitty gritty and start... Basically, I think Feng is better on offense than he is on defense. I'll put it that way. Now, that makes it sound like I'm saying you should keep pressing buttons with Feng. No. But uh, if you just stick to pure defense with Feng, I feel like he's... Unless you have some really good reads and uses unique tools well... I feel like he's weaker than most most of the cast, right? Which is a weird thing to say when he asks you like this, right? But that's kind of what I mean. You have to have like really specific reads to make the most out of these. It is scary to go in on Feng, right? It's very scary. But like, you know, honestly, when he's the one to force on defense, I don't mind waiting him out. <laughs> right? And then when he gets in my face and he's forced to do like his offensive stuff, that's when I'm scared of Feng. But when Feng is back here doing this shit, just don't chase him down. He's just looking for you to fuck up, and that's all that this is about. I want you to fuck up. I want you to fuck up. You know? Now, when Feng is holding on to a lead, then this stuff becomes extra scary, right? But at the end of the day, if he keeps doing this sort of dumbass shit, right? He eventually back himself into a wall if you got the wall in your favor. If you don't have the wall in your favor, then you just kind of have to know when to go in. And that, then it gets hard. But to me, Feng is scarier as the aggressor than he is as the defender. To me. I don't know. Maybe that's a weird take. Maybe it's not right to say that most people are better on defense. Uh, that's, a, nah, that's not the right way to put it. He does have, like, all these unique tools. So that's a stupid way of putting it. Um... I don't think his comeback potential is, uh, oh, no. Hmm. They gave him a lot of juggle damage. I'm trying to think about what his weaknesses are now that I look through his moves. His range is kind of all over the place. He has to, he's forced to use a lot more moves than a lot of other characters. He's pretty unsafe on block. The moment he fucks up, if you're sharp and you block punish him properly, you really make Feng players feel that shit. Um... 
His mix-ups really leave him wide open to get hit. But his offense is still very scary. That's really what it is. If you know how to punish Feng, and you get the most... It's kind of like Huarang. If you know how to punish this character, and you make the most out of your reads, this character basically eats shit really hard. Right? It's a lot like Huarang, in my opinion. But it doesn't make either of them bad characters. They're still both really good characters. He has no weaknesses. He killed his master. Basically, yeah, KO. I don't know if I would call it a weakness, but that's how I feel about him. He has to use a lot of his moves. He lacks a generic down forward to encounter hit launcher. Man, that's not a big deal. Gener lacking a generic down forward to is not a weakness, in my opinion. That's not a big deal. That, I mean, that's a very good move to have, but lacking it doesn't put you at an automatic disadvantage. I don't believe that at all. His hop kick sucks, so that is definitely a disadvantage. His hop kick is trash, right? But this while standing three is fucked up. All right. So unless you think players know about any good Oki, feel free to chime in like always off of his uh, off of his grabs and command grabs. I'm gonna go into that now, and I always like to start with wake up kicks. So I'll start with just good old down four, right? Good old down four. Beats out both weaker kicks. Hits grounded. I'm sure it'll hit both side rows also. Might even be guaranteed. We don't know yet. Alright, I record him doing it on me. Doesn't look guaranteed. Right, definitely not guaranteed. But it seems like if you uh, you have to get up to block and block low to get away from it, otherwise it's get it's gonna hit you in every situation. Only five damage though. Right. Assess down three now. That looks a little too slow. We'll see. Okay, beats out wake up low. Beats out wake up kicks. Beats out side roll down. It switches sides. Yeah, so it beats out side roll both directions. Uh, breaking it doesn't switch sides. Uh, on success, it seems to switch sides. Every time? Or is it camera shit? Alright. Uh... Wait, whoops. I had a brain fart there. That looked a little slow. Let me try again. Ooh, ooh. All right, that looks better. Down four deals and they grounded, right? Yeah. But it's gonna be that wake up kicks, I'm sure. Right, that's what matters. He'll launch you at an awkward angle. But if I hold back, what happens? It whiffs. See, it's good anti wake up kick. But when I see that, how unsafe is it? Wow. All right. That's what I like to see. Free whiff. Oops, I, I forgot to mash jab. He's too far to jab. I can't even touch jab. Cross jab? Oh, he doesn't cross jab. Okay, so he gets a jab in. Uh, his four is 11 frames, right? All right, no range. What was his 12 frame again? I forget. Does he have a 12? Oh, he does fish him. Oh man, doesn't reach. 
So I got the jab. Oddly enough, I got the jab to reach. But, uh... It's hard to test 11 frame. Shoulder definitely doesn't. So 13 frames is out. It might be 14 with that range, though. No, that's that's, thir that's 13. It's active frame number one, it's saying. Why was my tap up? Okay, you still block it. So it's not a hundred percent safe whiff, but you're not gonna get launched for it, which is big. about that one at all but it sometimes does he always get that kick because he's not he he's at your side basically right oh damn dude <laughs> Maybe Fishing would be a better man. <laughs> hey, uh, what are his mids that hit grounded? Does he only have the slow shit? Is it only 4-4-3? Four, four, For mids that hit grounded and like 4 tilde 3 Does he have a fast mid that hits grounded? Anybody know? Yeah, exactly. That's that's what it would happen in a real match, I feel like. It's great that like you'll fuck up wake-up kicks. Don't get me wrong, but... You know... Shoulder can hit ground sometimes. That's one of those that will hit fat characters for sure, right? Like a like a Kuma. Well, let's see. Hold on a second. Whoop. I, I'm I'm not confused on what side I'm gonna end up on sometimes with this shit. Mm, that looks good. They try to get up. You have to make it whiff, which makes me worry because if you make it whiff, you know what's going to happen. Yeah. <sighs> um, like a cool, like a Kuma. <laughs> All right, you, you, you suggested down back two before. Let's see what happens when they do down back two. Oops. <clears throat> Oh my god, come on. That that input is so weird to me. You can tell I'm not used to it, right? What the fuck? I'm mashing and you got a cross jab? Ah. Oh my god, fan cancel, you asshole. Shit. Oh. I gotta time it? Is that what's gonna happen? I'm gonna get a cross jab if I don't time it? That looks slow. It looked like he stood up and did it. I don't know. Alright, I don't think that's gonna be great, but let's see. If I stay down, what happens? Alright, the first hit knocks you away. If I hold back, it's gonna whiff, probably. Oh, good job. Great job recording. Oh my god. What the fuck, cameraman? Make up your mind. Sometimes it's gonna switch sides, sometimes it's not. I hate this kind of shit. Fuck. Only on Toopy's side, huh? That input is no good on the other side. <laughs> what the fuck? I don't, it's one recording. Whatever. Uh, Dot Max 2 doesn't look good. Um. Let's see if I can get a 4-4-3 and out in time. I don't think I can, but... Ugh. 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 Uh, I don't think it's gonna work. <laughs> um... It's all right. It seems like this is one of those instances where you're forced to use the down three and the down four, right? Let me go back to those. 
to keep them honest, right? Most people, I think, will just eat that low. Oh, that's that. Um... Yeah, down three looks good. Now, the problem with down three is that it's long punishable. So, you could go with down four as a safer but less damaging option. And it's, it catches them. See, all right, good. I like that. That's what I like to see right there. So, they can't low parry this. They have to low block. Oh, wow. Wait, that might be guaranteed. Hold up a second. Wait, what? He got up and blocked it before. Tap up, tap up. There. Uh, no. Oh, shit. That's guaranteed. I'm holding down back and I'm trying to tap up and hold down back. Oh, okay. It is. It's tap up and hold down back. It's just... Yeah, I was I was timing it poorly. Which I feel like most people know. They're just, they're just gonna eat the down four for five damage. Right? Um... My recommendation would be just down four every time, right? If you're going into an unknown matchup, just down four every time. They're going to eat it every time. I, I, I almost, I, I will put money on them just eating the down four, no matter what. They might wake up kick, but they're going to eat the down four. They're not going to low block it. And when they low block it, finally, do the low again. <laughs> because then they're like, all right, they're going to think, oh, now that, I, now that he knows it, I know that I can low block it. He's not gonna go low again. And then go low again. <laughs> I'm gonna try to wake up kick now. Um, you know what I'm saying? And if, uh, I don't know if you could tell if they wake up kick and then convert into the one plus two for counter hit. I don't know if you're gonna be able to notice that. Is there like, um... And then that, you know, and then it'll, it'll open up basically any mid. Any mid, for the most part. You might be able to notice. You might be able to notice that. If you pay close attention to your opponent's animation, if it looks like they're getting up, commit to the 1 plus 2. At worst, they just got up and they didn't press a button. You know, they didn't press a wake up kick, and then you're negative 10. Big whoop, right? But at best, you'll you'll get the counter hit rewards, 30 damage. It's not bad. And then eventually you can work in the um, you know, the mid options. Um, if you ever read on how they're waking up, uh, if you ever read on how they're waking up, I like shifting clouds because they wake up into a 50-50. That's true. Well, I mean, the idea is. You get them to either eat the low every time, right? And then if you notice a pattern of them, they're just going to eat the low every time. Then maybe you could consider taking the risk of getting greedier and landing like a forward forward three, right? That's that's the general idea. When I look for, like, the way you look at Oki in Tekken, right? Unless you have some really specific setups. Just general Tekken Oki, right? Is you look for your fast thing that's going to hit them grounded. Your low option and your mid option, right? Uh, assuming it's not guaranteed. Look for your fastest low option that will that will cover them staying down, wake up kicking, side rolling, all that shit, if, if available. And then look for your best mids, right? As long as you have one of those covered, specifically the low is the big one. Because the low, they have to duck to stop it from hitting them. They have to duck. They cannot low parry, right? The moment you find the low, generally, that's when it's, it goes, okay, then I can mix this up with whatever mid. The mid doesn't have to hit grounded. If it hits grounded, even better. Even stronger okay. When you find that stuff, then it just becomes a situation where it's like, all right, this guy thinks he's going to guess the low and he's going to commit. So I'm going to go for maybe a slower, more rewarding mid, right? If you if you want. Or I might just fuck with them and go into some other thing by throwing away my, you know, my, my, my straight up Oki and going for maybe a bigger mix up or another layer to my mix up. But taking the risk by throwing away your Oki and possibly eating like a delayed Waco kick. That's just like the mind game, right? That's how your, your, your basic ass Tekken Oki generally is. Assuming you want to force the situation. You don't have to. You can always just kind of back off or check if you could sidestep a wake up kick. Which will get you more reward with no risk. If you like, oh, this motherfucker likes a wake up kick now. You know? Can I step? Can I step it? 
Well, at least stepping it there didn't get me launched. Oh, fuck. The cameraman is really fucking with my side step here. Okay, so you... How about backdash? Oh, I, I did too early, but I think you can backdash. Look at that. Right? And then what happens if he goes mid? Right, so then if your read is if your read is wake up kick, so I'm gonna hit him with the mid, why not consider hey, my read is wake up kick backdash instead of going the going for the mid and forcing it. And then if you guess wrong, guess what? You're safe. You threw away your Oki, but you're fucking safe, so what, right? Big whoop. Other than if you guess wrong on a whiff, you might get punished. Right? Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. He's got it. He's got it off of the back dash. Yeah, they're letting you guess it straight up. It's a read, exactly. You know, like, well, I mean, you know, you can't just, like, be scared about everything because it's too risky. But the whole point is, if you have the read and you can force another layer, you, for, you force your opponent to think. Then they go like, oh, man, look at this crazy shit this guy just did. What is he going to do next? What are you going to do next? Go back to down four next time. You know? <laughs> do the regular shit next time. Simple. That's when you go back to the beginning. Instead of trying to add more and more complex layers for no reason, rewind back to the beginning. Because they're so mind fucked at what you just did. The begin Going back to the beginning will probably work. Probably. Depending on the kind of opponent you're fighting, obviously, you know. We're just talking about just theory crafting mind games here, but you get the idea, right? You just have to know what you can do with your character. Um. Oh boy, okay. Uh, I need a drink of water. Yeah, Shifting Clouds has a straight up mix up, a low mid, low mid, uh, mid launching low mix up. Shifting Clouds being forward 3 plus 4. <clears throat> Alright, so. Command grab. Down forward one plus two. No, uh, any side switching shenanigans going on here? Let's see. The cameraman might get confused sometimes. You can't tell with this fucking cameraman. Alright. So it seems like it consistently keeps them on the same side. And then on break, we switch sides on break. So we have a great option when your back is to the wall here. Because if on success... You get whatever Oki you get. Hopefully, you get some good Oki. And on break, you switch sides. Off of down forward, one plus two. But not two plus four. All right, no switch sides here, but you got some spacing. One plus three. Now, this is not going to switch sides, but it's going to turn. So, if the wall is uh, to your back, the wall is going to be to your right side if they break this. One plus three. And if the wall is to your right side, right, up forward three. You keep that in mind. Think about your positioning always. I see two plus four on success. Doesn't switch sides, but pushes him away. Oh, it does it? Well, it switches sides depending on what the cameraman decides to fucking do, apparently. Because he's not moving. The camera is like, all right. The camera is breaking the fucking rule. The 180 degree line rule. <laughs> For you filmmaking nerds out there. The camera is breaking the rule. See? That camera cut? That camera cut is breaking the imaginary line. <laughs> no wonder this is so disorienting. Alright, I took like media studies as my college major and I just finished. I just graduated with my, um, with my uh, bachelor's four years. And like, one of the, the like basic film school one-on-one -on -one, right and it applies here this is why this is why this is so confusing there's an imaginary 180 line when you're dealing with 3d environment there's an imaginary 180 line the tip of feng's foot left foot my thing and the uh, cpu feng's left foot 180 line with the camera you generally want to want to never pass the 180 line which is to say i'm looking at them here maybe here here but i never go around the back and to the other side of either thing 
to maintain a sense of clarity of like positioning in the arena. And it's amazing how this applies right here to Tekken. Because then what goes on with the Super's fourth throw is there's a camera cut and the cameraman's on the other fucking side. See? And it's incredibly disorienting unless you grab, you know going into the grab that that's going to fucking happen. But you know what? That's the kind of shit that causes these fucking glitches where you can't tell what fucking side you're going to end up on sometimes. I swear. It's that kind of shit. Whatever. Successful to grab switches sides. Or at least the cameraman switches around. I don't fucking... I can't tell anymore, to be honest with you guys. It probably doesn't switch sides. Maybe the cameraman just switches around. I don't even know. I have to look at it at the wall. You know what? Let's just go to the wall stage now. That shit is super disorienting. Sorry about Autobot. I'm unable to turn that off. This fucking cameraman going into business for himself, dude. Yeah, position remains the same, I figured, once you saw the camera come, but that shit is so disorienting if you don't know that going in. I might as well show it in action. Fucking, it was probably always like that, but now I'm like, coming off of those classes that's fresh in my memory now, so I'm probably looking for it now and noticing it now. But it was probably always like that, that throw. It just doesn't make any fucking sense to me, All right? So yeah, so the, there's no position switch here, but the cameraman, <laughs> the cameraman's like, all right, I'm over here now. All right, well, anyway, so one plus three throw on break. <clears throat> oh, that actually turns a lot more than I thought. I thought it was just a uh, sideways turn. So this does switch sides. And you're also spaced out all the way over here, so it's a reset situation essentially on break. So one plus three. That should be your go-to when your back is to the wall, I think. Like if you if you're looking just to side switch. Right? Cause then all success is gonna toss them away, right? Yeah, it's gonna toss them away and essentially it'll allow you to get get away from the wall after you toss them across the screen. Alright, let's look at some more things over here while we're at the wall. Um, oh, that's not guaranteed. Okay. So, that's guaranteed. Okay, that's not. Ah, someone told me this last time. All right, back turn one into shoulder is the follow-up to one plus two at the wall. Back turn one plus two at the wall. And you, you get a low wall hit shoulder, 60%, 18 damage. I think it was KO or something that last time. All right, right mid-stage. Go back to the throw open here. All right, so, and we know one plus two on, on break switches sides, so success leaves him there. So now let's look at one plus two. It might be the same Oki here. Yeah, it might be just down four or down three again, right? But at the very least, they're face up. So here, you could be more inclined to risk the mid because they're face up. So as long as they don't counter hit you, you're not gonna get juggled, right? If they're face down, you're going to eat the juggle on the low. But face up, as long as you don't get counter hit, you don't, you don't eat the juggle. Oh, I'm wrong kick. The down three works, and the down four works. Uh, does blue shoulder reset the splat count? Um... I think it's only on a high, yeah, somebody's already saying it, on a high wall splat. Up two is great for Oki after that grab, beats both Waco kicks and hits grounded. Ooh, that's the kind of, that's the goofy shit. That's the Feng specific shit. So we have the better, yeah, oh, that's sick. That's great. Hold on a second. That's the crazy shit. Oh, maybe not. It might be matchup dependent. Some matchups he'll jump over. 
Yeah, see? Not against himself, but some matchups he'll be able to jump over the mid. I don't think they'll be able to juggle you off of that, will they? Well, the hit's grounded, so that's cool. How about, uh... Yeah, no. He's not one of those characters that has those mids that make people backflip off the floor. Uh, so basically, it's like I said, yeah, since the, the opponent is not face down here, um, with little care, you could basically, uh, with less care, you could swing the mids that would win. Like a down forward three to beat out waker kicks or if they get up crouching. But the back turn grab, I would be a lot more careful because the moment you whiff something, that low is going to launch you. It might be better off of this, right? Oh, no, no. Okay, I'll try to test because that's a different wake up kick. It's a resplat to slup. I'm not sure of anything other than micro back dash down forward three works. Oh, all right. Uh, after up to. Well, unfortunately, up to. Okay, uh, up to on normal hit, fish up the shoulder. Cool, thank you. Good damage, too. Alright, so his regular throws, I don't think he get, he gets, does he get any crazy okey because he does have that 4 tilde 3. It doesn't look like he does, but uh, I could be wrong here. Oh wait, this keeps him close. This keeps him close, alright, let's see. So the down three, if he holds back, reaches. The down four, rather. All right, the down three reaches, good. You don't want shit whiffing. That's that's where it, fu it fucks up really bad for you. Ugh. Down four, three, asshole. Yeah, that's not... I don't know why I thought that would even work, but... Let's see. Um, no, what the hell am I thinking? Uh, forward three is gonna work for sure, but it probably lose the wake up kicks. I don't know about four three for Oki. Um, what's a good mid here? Another good mid that will not lose like that. Twenty. First hit for this. That looks slow. Ah, uh, whiffs. Is there a good mid for this that's gonna reach? Four three by itself is fine, I guess. No, four three is gonna be too slow. Shoulder is good, but if they block it, you get to eat shit. Uh, try. I just did. I just did down back one. It whiffs. Down four four. Ugh. Not match friendly, huh? Nah, oh well. I mean, can you punish that? Poor thing. Okay. So you're only gonna eat like jabs. No biggie. It's 
12 frame. That, that's 13. That's active frame number one. So a 12 frame gap there to punish him. Uh... What? No. Four to the three. <clears throat> Dom four four might be holding back. That's what I was doing. Yeah, no. <clears throat> he he needs to recover faster to get free hits on people holding back. <clears throat> I mean, it's not bad. That twelve frame gap. If you want to keep it as safe as possible and really like you know, min max it. For example, the round ending poke. Perfect. Perfect round ending poke mix up. Down four. Down four four. Perfect. Right. And the coolest thing about Don 4 is you always have the option of threatening with that second follow, which is only negative 10 on block. You always have that. That's what's really good. It's only 5 damage, but if they get up and block it, you can always just, uh, you know, especially trying to close out the round. You'd be surprised at how useful that shit is. Really, really handy option to have. <sighs> Alright, let's go look at some uh, floor break business. Oh yeah, I, was, I wanted to check, was it this? I'm trying to get, see how fast I get a 4 to 3 out of this. Oh my god, I can't get shit. He recovers too slow. That's definitely a throw that resets. That's not like a reset situation, if you will. Um, I know there's certain situations where you do this. I don't know if it's off of a throw or something, but you do this shit, and it just fucking smokes people for trying to get up. And I can't remember if it's off of a throw or uh, something else. It's like course circle forward 3 plus 4. Feng has a lot of really unique shit. Like, the actual Feng players, the people who do the Feng, the full-on, like, Feng-specific guides out there for setups and shit. You gotta look into this, because this move, this move does a lot of crazy shit. This homie move. In Oak, on Oki situations. It's a bad whiff, though. Um, but yeah, let's go to the floor break stage. One throw only gets Oki at the wall. Good point. I forgot to test at the wall. It looks like he recovers super slow. Why did I go left? Let's go right. His regular stomp floor breaks, right? Like, um... Okay, that's cool. I don't think they all do that. I'm not sure about that. Like, I don't think Dragonovs does that. I might be wrong. Whatever. Um... So, we know his regular stomp floor breaks. Floor 4, 3, right? That's gonna floor break, too. Any, any like, super unique shit that he has that floor breaks that people might want to know about? His 1 plus 2? This floor breaks. Yeah. Very nice, right? So it's a whatever the fuck the combo is. I mean, even that was 65 damage off of a throw. That's good. What else we got? Down back two two two, right? Dragon Ops does here. Yeah. Uh, down back two 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 floor breaks, right? Uh, I. Uh, Three tilde four, I think, floor breaks, but I couldn't really find a good way to use it. Oh, you recovered back to him from that. <laughs> uh, so back turn three is gonna floor break. What else? Four four three, yes. Nah, they're really far. They're really far after that. Shit. But four, that also makes four, four, three by itself floor break. Obviously, does he get any moves that juggle that wouldn't usually juggle? Does he have floor break options? For example, um, does he have some sort of spike after that that will give him a floor break? Right. Right. 
Anybody know? Of course, circle for one plus two after a wall splat. Cool. Does his Scorpio kick whatever call whatever call from stance floor breaks? Scorpio kick? You know the input? You mean, uh, oh, Shifting Clouds 3. Uh, how would I set that up? Man, I don't know how I'm gonna set that shit up. It do. That's a goofy ass. Uh... Oh, 30 damage. So that's a lot of damage from one hit floor break. If you could get it. It's not bad. Right? Um... Oh, really? Sure about that? Uh. Oh. Hmm. Doesn't look like it. Yeah, no, it doesn't look like it. Uh, but yeah, does any, you know, the counter hit back forward one gets a full combo if you use forward forward three. Of course, this, on counter hit, it's a four for got it. Forward three, four, forward one. So I gotta do a jab, okay. Okay, there we go. Oh, they're already at the wall. Huh. You can't tell at that angle. Alright. So counter hit back swing blow to forward forward three is gonna break. Oops, what am I doing? Oops. Oh my god, I gotta delay it, because he's over it. <laughs> oh man, it'll be like four, 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 three. Oh, you mean after the floor break into the... Oh, you mean after the floor break. Okay, got it. Uh, sorry. Uh, no dash required? Nice. All right. 72 damage off of a backswing blow. All right. So what gives him a free... What knockdowns give him a free stomp? Okay. No, no floor break there. Um... Yeah, that kind of stuff, does, it has to combo the floor break. So, knockdowns that combo into a stomp. No, it doesn't. Oh, shit. Um, counter hit down, too. 
No. This might work. No, no. The fact. Oh. That doesn't work. Too slow. Um. Uh, what else? Um. I'm just pressing shit. No floor break. Counter hit back combo one. Yes, yeah, so I just tried. Uh, yeah, his stuff is all stuff that has to be like in the air and shit. It's true. Which is why I was wondering if he has something for this. He doesn't have anything that can floor break with this in this stage. That doesn't rely on like the match a specific shit. Get a stomp after four, 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 three delay. Sure, but he could get a regular jungle juggle off of that also. We talking about you talking about at the, as a juggle ender. I mean, he could just do a regular juggle off of that. All right, here's a need a a stomp to to convert that, but without the delay, he doesn't get a juggle. This is a Tekken 3DS song. Exclusive. Doesn't he get more damage with the floor break? Maybe. Probably not. That doesn't look like a lot of damage. So maybe as a jungle lender, he does. Four with three, four, four, so that's up right. Four, 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 three, four, one. Okay. Wait, side step right, four, four, four. Do you need a side step right? Stage that gets you to the wall at an angle, which means you could probably sidestep left and carry him to the other wall to re splat. All right, so I mean, I can't think of anything else. If he can't convert his knockdowns with free stomps, that, that's kind of whack, but whatever, it's not a big deal. I really wish he had something to convert this in this stage, though, but. You know, it's whatever. I'm not playing Feng, so. It just would have been a nice thing to have. Let's go to the wall. What would be his wall combo, floor break combo here? At the wall. Four four three. Oh, down four one resplats. What's more damage? Down four three is way more damage. Uh, 
four four three headbutt. Headbutt right after the resplat then, right? Oh, best second song. Damn it, too much delay. That was already 64 damage though, so that was looking to get nasty. Alright. Oh, low wall hit. <laughs> that fucks it up. Low wall hit fucks it up. Um, damn. I'm just naturally getting low wall hit. That's a lot of damage still. <laughs> Jesus. Do so you have a faster floor break? I mean, that's not trash like that. Stomp, maybe? I should just stomp. Or not. I'm gonna get a low wall hit every time. I keep getting a low wall hit on the resplat. <laughs> that It's weird because I'm just naturally getting it when I don't want it. Yeah, is there like a fast yeah. option? By the way. Yeah. Ugh. See? Yeah. Just to show you guys what I was talking about earlier. You could pick up off of that. Maybe if I respect with down forward one, it'll be easier, but that's so much less damage. Oh, shit. Yeah. Oh, wow, really? Oh, that was not a low wall hit shoulder, huh? So he gets to uh, get a 70s there. I had the latest shoulder. Weird. Damn, that just gives him a full. So I should add a hit. I should add a hit there. That looked like a oh maybe I was slow. Let's try it again. Oh, I hit one one back there. Maybe jab shoulder. get me more damage overall without doing the resplat. <clears throat> wow, now nah, I don't get what the fuck the positioning is so weird. I get what's going on. If you don't get them to flip around, you're you're closer to them, so you can't really get the resplat. 
because because the stomp, but I got 71 damage there. Oh, that wasn't a low wall hit. What the fuck? Ah. Uh, or was that? Is the low wall hit after floor break 42%? Is that how that works? See? Yeah, it is. So 42% is the low wall hit. All right. So if you floor if you floor break with the headbutt, you gotta you could resplat and then go into your standard wall combo. All right, so let me try this again. I got a new idea. Nope, I still have to delay it. Fuck. I was hoping since it was that many hits, I wouldn't have to delay it to time it. There it is. So 72 damage. So basically one more damage than the other should have been coming up with. You mean 4-4-3? Yeah. I mean it is. I'm just trying to like min-max the numbers here and see what you can get. Right? So four four three does work after a down four one resplat. I wasn't sure about that because it wasn't working after the down four three, but the down four three is fucking hard in general, right? See, it's not gonna work. But after the down four one resplat, is there another good resplat? That looks good. Eight. Seven. We could squeeze some more juice out of this. Fifteen. Um. Seventeen. Sixteen. Eighteen. Eighteen. Oops. Nah, down forward one is the only one that's good. This back one re -splat, Uh the damage is not great on back one, even if it does. It looks like it kind of does. But not, nah, it recovers weird too. Down forward one gives you the forward four three, which makes me want to do that more. So my, I guess my do idea is Oh, no delay. Maybe without delay this will work. I still get the low wall hit now. <sighs> nope. Damn it. You can do 3 3 and end it there, but. Maybe 1 2 shoulder. <sighs> nope, 1 shoulder. Oh, they just fall right down. Mm -hmm. 
Now you wanna when you floor break, you're gonna wanna end your wall combo with the low wall hit. Otherwise your damage is gonna be shit. Yeah, exactly. Anytime you go you're trying to get these uh good uh, floor you know floor break combos and then you wanna end end it with wall combo, you wanna go for something that ends with a low wall hit to reset the scaling. Which after a floor break is forty two percent. I keep thinking it was like fifty or sixty. But they made it less because they nerfed it. It used to be full, I think. Like, that's why Lily was doing crazy damage. But one of the reasons why. Is there, uh, is there a stronger two hit string there? Four, four, three. Re splat forward, four, three. I ain't gonna give you shit either, though. Um. Uh, I could try, but I think the, I think he's gonna fall out of that. I mean, I didn't try, so let me try. I might be able to make that work. Let's see. No. Alright, I gotta delay the third hit only. First two attack I do as fast as possible. Seventy six. I got seventy seven before, didn't I? Yeah, this is all nonsense. This is <clears throat> Oh no, that's not right. I just went right into it. So the best thing to do might be to avoid the resplat after the floor break. What did I do to get to 77? No, I got 77 when I did forward 4-3. Four, Down forward one resplat. It's not worth it. If you're gonna floor break, don't do the down forward one resplat. his best like floor break combo and uh his general wall combo is just without floor breaks just one uh one three shoulder right and then you can do three three delay like this like as long as you get the last hit to be 60 percent 13 damage you're good and then they tech and then you get your back to your mix up and shit right and we already went through this but <clears throat> of course 
that's a wall combo. So if you get the back turn one to connect, if you get the back turn one plus two connect, you can do the back turn one shoulder also. Which is not working right now. There you go. You gotta mash it out, but uh, you'll get that to combo and that will be a low wall hit. Um, what's the wall combo without floor break on the back turn sweep? Lost adding one two shoulder. Lost adding one shoulder. Forty seven or the whole string. I got the I got the first time. Huh. How much do you gotta put? Oh well, whatever. Just do while standing one shoulder. Um What do you get off of a side step four at the wall? Oh you can do three three four. So you can do three, three, four. So you walk come off of side step four. I don't know if there's anything better. Down forward one shoulder. It'll be three, three, four for damage. There it is. 54 damage. Uh, nothing better when you consider the Oki. Yeah, that's true. And this is more damage. And remember, I, you know, they could get up into this shit after you connect that combo, right? Like, let me see what the situation is if I get it, if I'm on the receiving end, right? We're going to switch positions. And we're going to record. Right? That looked like it was the low wall hit version, right? Oh, it whiffs! It whiffs! <laughs> it, might, it, it might be that plus four shit, though, right? Yeah. I mean, you're safe. Is it one of those where he's plus, though? Too slow. Oh, wow. That delay it. Yeah, if you delay the three. It'll kill people getting a mashing. That's not that great though. Um So what do you get when they tech in that situation? If they tech to the right, you gotta do up forward two. <laughs> up forward two, wait, what? What's up forward two? Oh, but you mean when they're facing you. Cause you're gonna wake up, they're gonna you're gonna be back turn. Back turn three. So back turn three is what keeps them still, and then you mix that up with other stuff. Is that what's going on? I don't know how I like that. 
<clears throat> Let's see one plus two. Um, oh, that first. Okay, that looks like it'll keep. Well, it might be too fast, actually. Yeah. But how do you up for two if you back turn? Just to say if it was through them, but that's a risk too, isn't it? Like if you do that, I could punish that. Also, uh, Seems like back turn down three is your thing to stop them from stepping. Which I don't know how I feel about that. Of course, back turn down four also. And of course, you don't have to commit. You could just go back turn and then turn around. I guess the idea is that back turn down three is. As a threat that you can't backdash away from, so you have to guess when you tech. But like, I don't. I wish one of the mids tracked better. Like one of the mid options tracked better. I'd feel better about forcing that for Oki. Oh, well, it's not bad. Can't have it all, thing. Uh, that wall splats and that's plus two or plus one? So I said one plus two. Plus one. So you got a plus one wall, uh, mid wall spatting option that comes out of a sidestep. It's a slow move, but it's there. And I, just, I like that his is dangerous lows are still dangerous at the wall. That's cool, because that's not the case for everybody, unless his balcony break him off. Um... Yeah, this kind of stuff is better at the wall because you get the plus frames, but they're forced to stand like right in front of you instead of being pushed away. So that kind of stuff is better. Same thing with the headbutt. Well, not as much. That pushes you back. Um, let's see. Let me see something. You can poke with this and stay back. That's cool. But it's still a poke. It's not a wall splat like some of those other like moves that chip away and splat. Any other cool shit at the wall? Like as uh, far as general wall pressure goes? Any other like moves that you look out for? Of 
course, the armor move. If you charge it. So many hits. Yeah, I, mean, I think people eat it sometimes. Yeah, side step four, side step one plus two, down forward three still works out the wall. You still get like one three shoulder, right? So down forward three is still a great option too, but side step one uh, as a faster mid option. Side step one plus two for slower mid option, but um, plus one on block. Oh, you get forward three four, huh? Interesting. That's more damage. I backdash, I should just do it raw. Oh my god, I'm mashing and that's why that's coming out. So then, since you're getting all these hits before the wall splat, that messes with your hit scaling. So you can't really do the normal uh, wall combos, it seems like, after the floor break. I don't think I could get the re-splat. Too many hits before the floor break. If I try to re-splat, it's gonna fuck up the combo. Oh 
my god, Feng is broken. Off of an armor move? That's safe on block? That's safe on block? An armor move? Are you kidding me? <laughs> Those of you who don't know, uh, Sting has a move. Sting. Did I call him Sting? What the fuck? Steve. The man they call Sting? Steve has a move uh, called... Um, whatever the fuck it's called. It's that shit, that high crushing punch where he leans back and does a straight. And when it punches you, it does that same hit effect. Right? Uh, he's uh, in the older games, at least. He's able to wall splat after that shit. With the, uh, in Tekken 5, I don't know if it's 5.0 or DR, I think both. He's able to do his unblockable after he hits you with it. As a wall splat. So he's like, boom, and then he does his unblockable. Bam! <laughs> and then he does his wall combo when you're dead. <laughs> it's his regular ass wall combo. One, two, one, two, you're dead. Yes, Paul gets a lot at the wall. Sting Fox. <laughs> the man they call Sting. <laughs> you guys ever see that shit from CNA? <laughs> Where Sting. <laughs> Hold on a second. <laughs> Hold on a second. <laughs> Alright, save this. No, that's not, that's a document. Save the picture. No, what the fuck? Save image as. From good old total nonstop action. level shit dude he posed as a fan of himself wearing his own shit and it was him all along <laughs> oh my god dude rvd never saw it coming what's up Landonia? rvd never saw it coming <laughs> I was a WCW kid growing up. Even even in the beginning of the Austin era, I liked that stuff too. But I was more of a WCW kid still. NWO. Because when you're NWO, brother, you're NWO. Until WCW dies. Alright, I guess that covers everything. I can't, uh... I can't think of, uh... I mean, you guys think I missed anything? Things a beast, what can I say? A lot of really good posts, a lot of really good tools. You do a lot of good shit with this character. Pretty dangerous at the wall. But, like, the better your opponent is at the game, the riskier he is. Which is where, which is where I draw my Huaran comparison in that aspect specifically. He's one of those where if you know how to get around, you know, his general mix-up and tools. Especially when it comes to, like, if people try to start using Get Cute and using this kind of shit, you know. And, of course, his back turn stuff. If people know that, oh, my option against the back turn stuff is not to guess right by hitting, by, by blocking. But it's to guess right by fucking hitting him in the rear <laughs> when I can, when I know I can. Then you can make him hurt for doing this kind of stuff. The difference between him and Huarang in that, in that specific aspect, though, is Huarang is forced to eat that while Feng always has the option to just block, right? In most of these, he could just not do a shit and create space, you know? So, it's still all risky because all this shit, you can eat stray hits. As long as there's range on the hits, you can eat some crazy stray hits doing all this shit. So, that's why it's not as risky as Huarang's stuff can be. While Huarang is forced to not block, so he has to keep attacking. So that, that's pretty much the short of it, you know? 
Really good tools. Down forward one, great poke. Fish hook, great poke. You know, back one, great defensive tool. And even on offense sometimes. You put yourself at negative one, two, or three, back one is great. It'll beat out most of the dangerous moves. And then you risk the counter hit moves that you risk eating in most instances are not a big deal. If you swing this out, <gasps> if you stick this out at negative one, two, or three. This is 10 frames. You know, shoulders, your whiff punish from like this range. Shoulders, your general whiff punish. Up close, the sidestep whiff punish. Hop kick is, is better for that. But if they do sweeps, it's probably going to whiff on them. Probably. It's a pretty good chance that a uh, hop kick will whiff against sweeps. Right? Up close. Let's see if I get it to whiff. Watch. It's going to happen. I'm pretty sure. See? Told you. <laughs> low, shitty hitbox. It could be low profiled very easily. Um, and then when he starts to really get into the thick of things, you can start to force back turn mix ups. 2 1 4 is one way to do that. You might use the delay on the one to get people to hesitate swinging. They might move backwards, though. Keep that in mind. And of course, just going into it, a neutral situation is another decent way to do it. Using uh, back three till the four. Right? If you get right in their face, they get afraid. You just go right into that shit, right? And typically, as long as you're in a situation right in their face like this, you know, and you're not in heavy negatives, this is something that they're not going to be able to backdash away from to avoid the trip. You know? Um, forward four. And to all that learn how to use forward four, even from like back here. Forward four. If you uh, hold, um, if you hold back, you 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 uh, you recover back turn. But now you do you recover back turn. He moves back, so he creates some space, and then you can do like down back to create even more space. Uh, you could just uh, do forward four, back hold back to create less space, but still create space. And then the safest way to turn around is forward four, back forward, right? So you gotta learn the single hit conversion, learn all that shit. Make sure you learn how to convert this, whether you go into back turn or not, because ideally you're gonna go to back turn. Just about all the time off of this. So you're going to want to learn the back to conversion, which is down forward one. Down forward while standing one. Right? And so whatever. That's like one of the best ways to convert off of that. Um, and every time you're doing all sorts of this funky ass uh, back turn, it's a down back. Look for while standing three with punish. Uh, a lot of fake players like to just throw that shit out there. I would recommend not doing that too much unless you have a good read because, you know, you get with punish. Easier to whiff punish that than it is to block punish it. I'll tell you that much. Sometimes. Sometimes. Um, but yeah. And then of course, like, back tempo step is a pretty good tool to, like, from here especially. You bait out certain whiffs, back tempo step. It has the built-in options, and if they whiff something really slow recovering, like, let's say, uh, Dragon Ball Running Suit, you don't even need to do the tempo option. You can just recover and do a hop kick or whatever, right? Like, like, uh, me famously did, right? So, back tempo step. Back three plus four. Very good tool. Uh, core circle forward one, mixing up with all the other core circle forward options. Remember that stuff. Remember I told you guys that. You know, remember that. Remember the uh, cr uh, the core circle forward. It's a while standing one. Right. Remember that stuff. And yeah, up forward two. Great two. Counter hit at the wall. He gets a wall combo, obviously. But without the wall, it's still gonna give a give give you a, a knockback. Yeah, as long as you're on axis, actually, I should make I should make that clear. As long as you're on, if you hit, as long as you hit them on axis, like right in the gut, you're going to get that effect, which gets you free shit at the wall, right? And yeah, and uh, also remember, of course, looking forward, down forward three. In general, down forward three is a very solid um, mix-up tool with side step four up close. As a general up close um, mix-up tool, high risk on the low, of course. But yeah. You get your get your juggle off of that sh off of uh, down four three, right? Uh, remember the four three four Oki. If you're able to end the juggle with the the bread and butter into the four three four Ender, dash up four two to three. Amazing option. They have to tech to block it. If they uh, get hit, teching specifically, you get a free fish hook. If they get hit holding back or something, you don't get anything for free unless you hit them in the back, I think. But you're not going to be able to tell the difference, probably. But treat it like plus seven in that situation. And plus seven right in their face, so it's really good. Um, yeah. 
That's the short of it. Oh, yeah, down two is a good poke. Also, really good high crushing poke. Really good. Up forward one. Oh, a lot of really tools. I can go on forever. I'm just giving you, like, a general game plan to start with. Your long range, very huge whiff punish is forward three, four, which is risky because it's lost punishable for, uh, by most of the cast. But in general, it's slow also. But in general, it's one of those also you can just kind of throw the forward three out by itself and you can react to a lot of whiffs and input the four. Right? You have to input the four pretty quick, though. It doesn't let you really delay it. So, by the time your forward three is starting to animate, and if you could tell you see a whiff, you could go for it. Or you could just sometimes just go for it, you know? Yellow. But, um, I would advise against using down back four too much, but it's there. It's not useless. It's just, it's a snake edge. That's all there is to say about that. It's a snake edge. Homing low. That starts juggles, right? At the tip, it seems like while standing one is the way to go. Oh, not even. Yikes. Yeah, I already said that. Side step four is, is great. Down back four isn't useless. I see good flank players use it all the time. It's not useless. It's a snake edge in that also low profiles. Keep that in mind also. And it is homing. So don't forget that shit. Um, this is a lot of good tools that could go in here, you know. I already went through all these moves, so you already know. Side step two, you know, back turn one. You know, back turn one pursues a pretty great two. It's an elbow, by the way, I forgot to mention. And elbows, you cannot count there. Remember his back turn throw mix up. Remember that shit. You know, you could go into a regular throw from back turn or the command grab from back turn. Remember all that shit. And of course, back turn down four, you'll be landing that a lot from back turn probably, right? Back turn down four plus three. Remember, down four one is only zero on block. It is 14 frames though. Only zero on block. Fish up. Amazing round ending poke. This shit is basically a homing poke. Basically, and it has good range too. I think it's very difficult to sidestep. So yeah, uh, yeah, that's Feng Wei. Feng Wei.